Welcome back. So now that we've just figured out that at least we can create our product service now, the next thing we want to do is try and create our first real test. So again, the first thing I want to do is actually add a describe right here because again, I'm going to go in one level right here because now we're going to focus on a specific area of my uh, product service, which is going to be the get products function right here. So that's the one I want to test. So I'm going to make a new describe right here under the first describe and that guy I'm going to add like this. There we go. So now we have the second describe the get products describe, right? So that's going to be all about how get products should work. Now in this area, we're going to make a new test. So let's just do a small test right here. And let's actually just copy this so you guys don't have to sit and watch me writing the same text again. So should call collection, right? It should call collection and it should also call snapshot changes on Firestore. Changes on Firestore. There we go. Um, so let's just try and hide this so you guys can see the text. So we should actually end up calling both collection and snapshot changes on Angular Firestore. And just to kind of show you guys how I know this, well, if we go into our get products in here, you'll notice if I jump into the service that it calls the collection right here with a collection path and then the snapshot change. So that's at least something I expect that my code should do. So let's just try and see if that is the case. I'll just get rid of this for now because I want to build this from scratch myself. Now, one thing you'll notice right here is I'm going to use the service again. We already used the service once up here and I don't want to end up doing this for every single call because I want to create a new service every time. So I'm going to move this to the top of my code so that it's a variable that I can reuse. So I'm just going to cut that right here, go all the way up here and just create um, a let right here for that service. There we go, that'll be a product service. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's initialize or get that service the same place that we're getting our mock. So I'll say service equal and then I'll pass in the test bed like this. So now we have our service available for every test so we don't have to rewrite that code again and again. Inside our second describe right here, what do we actually want to test? Well, what we're going to test is we're going to call service.getProducts. That's how similar it is. That's the test we're going to do right here. When we make this request right here, this call, we should end up, I expect that we end up and then we can use the mock, the Angular Firestore mock collection function. Now, if you guys go back, you can see that that function right here, that's not how you spell collection, there we go. That function right here is actually the function I specified up here when I created the mock. I expect that that collection is called one time, to have been called one time. That's kind of the first test that I just want to do to make sure when I call my products, I should actually go in and call that get collection right there, that collection, I should call that one time. And we can be more specific, we'll get back to that. Right now we fail, as you can see down here, so let's have a look. I get one failure because it doesn't know collection, right? I'm not returning anything for the collection right now. So let's just go back. Notice that it says when you try and get a collection, this guy will be null right now or undefined. And then I call snapshot changes on that undefined and I get an exception, right? Uh, can I call snapshot changes on undefined? Sweet, let's figure that out. So what we can do is what you've done other times as well, we can actually go in and make a mock, explain to the mock what should happen when we call collection. Let's try and do that. So we'll do the Angular Firestore mock right here, we'll do the and statement, we'll do the return value, and in the return value here, what do we need to return? Well, here's the problem. We actually need to return something very specific for that part. So let's try and jump into the service just to show you guys. The collection right here actually returns an Angular Firestore collection. So we need to return that. Hmm, an Angular Firestore collection. Well, we could try and do that. Let's just return that. New Angular Firestore collection. Whoops, Angular Firestore collection. There we go. Let's just pass that in. Now notice that needs some kind of query and some arguments and some stuff I don't really know anything about. So that's not what I want to return. Instead, what I want to return is actually going to be a mock of an Angular Firestore collection. Woo. So now we need a new mock that's actually for this Firestore collection. So I'll just create that up here and I'll just make a, a FS collection right here. That's going to be a new mock that we're building, right? Now the FS collection, we're going to create that right here as a mock using the same Jasmine right here, dot create object. And what we want to do is this is going to be the collection that we're going to mock right here. And that collection is going to have one, right now it's going to have one very specific thing we want to use. And in our case, that one specific thing is the snapshot changes that we're using right here. We need to kind of provide that as, um, as a thing we want to use. Now again, notice I'm just defining that when I call my Angular Firestore mock right here, I can call a function got collection. Now that collection function is going to return 
a new collection right here. So notice when I call Angular Firestorm mock dot collection now dot and dot return value, what it's going to return is actually this collection right here. So now it's returning a collection, and that collection has a method called snapshot changes. Now I know this is kind of complex, but it should start making sense some of this. Now the snapshot changes, we have to explain what that will return. So if we say collection dot snapshot changes right here, so just defining what this guy should return, that's actually going to return right now just an empty array, and later on what I want to return is going to be an array of products, right? Now we need to import the off keyword right here to get an observable, but notice again it's going to import the internal one, so let's just try and do it right here, let's just try and import that, import, and you'll notice it actually imports the internal one, I showed you that earlier, that's a bad thing, so let's just get rid of that part and just return, uh, import the off right here. Now what does this mean? This actually means that when I call my Angular Firestore right now, the actual Angular Firestore service dot collection, instead of getting back a collection, I'm actually getting back this mock, the FS collection, which is another spy just called collection that has a method called snapshot changes right now. Now the method snapshot changes right here returns an empty array right now, but later we can start putting in products right here inside an observable, because that's what that snapshot change should actually return. That's all we have to do. So now I've kind of defined right here what the default setup should be for my angle of firestore.collections.snapshotchanges.